Hello and welcome to the final video of the Curse Ghost Town of Kinke Horde, Chapter 10, The End to a New Beginning. Alicio frantically making his way back to town, running and not stopping. He can barely keep up with his own legs and trips and falls down. When he stops rolling, he is suddenly on the road at the sign of the town. Slowly standing up and looking upwards to gaze at the sign, it looks newer than it did before. What is going on in this fucked up place? L races over towards his cabin. I need to find something, anything, that I can defend myself with. Looking in his cabin, he finds a few small knives. These will have to work. Nothing else here. Making his way up the big hill to the mine building, for the third time, he starts to ponder why Aldo truly wanted this place. It just didn't make sense. Now look what kind of mess they are in. Reaching the building, he slides the door open with force. Marching over towards the machinery, he flips the switch for the power. He inserts the keys and turns it. Nothing. Oh my god. Great. Now what? He yells. Looking at the fuel gauge, he sees it's on empty. Storage. The storage room must have some gas. He runs out of the building and goes around back. Opening the door, he notices a few cans in the back corner. Empty. 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 Aha. This one has some left in it. Jogging back over, he puts the gas in the tank. Seventy. Well, it's better than zero. I just hope it's enough to get us there in one piece. Inserting the key again, he turns it and pushes the button, and it fires up. The controls on the dash seem fairly straightforward. Up, down, and speeds. He starts to call the elevator up, which takes about 40 minutes to get to the top. Okay, here we go. We gotta be quick. I'll put the speed to slow and run over to the elevator. Here goes nothing. He puts the elevator into gear and runs over to it and jumps on. As he descends and goes into the mine, he hears more chanting. A hundred feet, two hundred feet, three hundred feet, four hundred feet, five hundred feet. As he passes the six hundred foot level, he hears the screams. I hear them. I can hear them, just like the journal had mentioned. Getting to the bottom, the elevator won't stop so he has to jump off. The slack from the rope and chains continues to come down. Looking up, he sees a worn sign, level 800. The chanting is a bit louder down here, turning on his flashlight, but it just dies out. Hitting it to get it to work doesn't seem to work this time. Well, that's just great. Looking around, he finds just what he needs. How lucky. Almost like this was left here just for me. A zippo, a stick, some rags, and kerosene. He makes his torch and goes towards the sounds. Lit by only the torch, it's hard to see, but it's better than having nothing. The sounds are getting louder, and he can feel the drums in his chest. At the horizon of the tunnel, he sees a faint glow of light. Arms begin reaching out of the rocky tunnel. L moves them to the side as he's walking but struggling to do so. He sees a door in the distance. As he approaches the door, the drums, chanting, and arms disappear instantly. Silence. Complete silence. What the fuck? I hate it here. Visibly shaken, he reaches his trembling hand out towards the door. 
the old wooden door begins to slowly open. The creaking echoes through the mine. Peering inside, L sees a fire burning and symbols on the walls. I recognize those symbols. They're the same ones that were on the box I found at home in the attic and all the other ones along that riddle. Hearing what sounds like a muffled voice, he opens the door fully. Completely frozen, he stands there terrified. He's looking at a naked Arnaldo hanging upside down from a rope. He runs over to him and removes the gag from his mouth. What? Who? L whispers. Aldo says, Little brother, you need to get out of here now before they come back. Before who comes back, he questions. But as those fateful words leave his mouth, the wooden door slams with force, making L jump and spin around, flabbergasted by who he sees. How, L says in a confused tone, panning up to see Terrence and Clarence. We're here to collect. Collect what, you might ask? Your souls. You see, this land has been home of the Collector for centuries. He was conjured by the natives of the land. He was dormant. That is until your humankind started digging and disrupting these sacred grounds. A low hum begins to form. The chanting so soft begins to increase in tone. He's coming. He's here. An ear-piercing, heart-stopping yell comes from the other side of the door, which busts open. It's, it's you, El says, surprised. It was the native chief from his dream. I thought it was just a dream. It was not a dream. It was a message which you clearly didn't understand. It was meant to scare you away from here and never return. But you continued to try to figure out the curse, the curse which can never be broken. Terence and Clarence, along with the chief, begin to close in. Please, just let us go. We'll leave and never come back. Oh, it's far too late for that child. The time has come. I'm here to collect, and collect is what I shall do. Rushing L, they begin to fight and struggle. Aldo swinging back and forth manages to trip Clarence and as he falls, he smashes his head off the ground and falls unconscious. Clarence, his brother screams. Looking at Aldo, he approaches him and kicks him square in the face, causing Aldo to also lose consciousness. L tries to make a run for the door, but the collector is much too fast and blocks his way. They struggle against one another for a few seconds when Terence hits Elysio, in the back of the head. L falls to the ground. With blurred vision and ringing in his ears, he sees the outline of the two men approaching him. L also passes out. Feeling the warmth of blood running down his face, Alicio notices he is now hanging upside down next to his brother. He's dead. He killed him. L groaning gets the attention of Clarence. Your brother killed mine. What is that saying? An eye for an eye? Now you'll watch me do the same to your brother. Grabbing Arnaldo by the hair, he exposes his neck. Aldo tries to wiggle and squirm, but it's useless. Any last words? Aldo says something, but El can't quite understand what it is. What? Speak up, Aldo, please. I can't hear you. Terence pulls out a big hunting knife. You will be the collector's first victim. He plunges the knife into his throat. L screams in horror. Spurts of blood shooting out cover L's face. Gurgling due to all the blood, Aldo manages to muster out one last statement. Wake up! Wake up, Alessio! Beep. 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 Sounds of a hospital come into focus. Aldo pleading. Wake up, please. Please wake up, L. 
I can't lose you too. I just can't. Alessio slowly moves his head and makes a whimper. Alessio, he says. Nurse, nurse, come quick. He's waking up. Oh my God, little brother, you're awake. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. My prayers were answered. The nurse comes in. Doctor, we need some help here. The doctor rushes in. His name tag reads Dr. Trouble. You truly are a miracle, the doctor says with a sharp English accent. Do you remember what happened? Do you recall anything? L pulls himself up ever so slightly. Um, I mean, I don't really know. I'm not sure what was real and what was imagination. Well, let's just say you're very lucky to be alive. You had a terrible motor accident. You were drinking and driving and you T-boned a young family. Are, are they okay? No, I'm afraid to say there was casualties. The mother survived, but the father, a well-respected native business owner, he did not, nor did their two children, twins, Terrence and Clarence. You've been in a coma for two months. L with tears pooling in his eyes says, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do this. In the distance, police radios can be heard outside. Come in, officers. Two officers walk in. So this is the scum that took the lives of that innocent family. I expected you to look a little less pathetic. More chatter comes over the radio. Me? I'm Detective Nico. I've been waiting for you to wake up. I want you to know that you do have some very serious charges against your person. Operating a vehicle while intoxicated. Operating a vehicle with a suspended license. Operating a vehicle while under the influence causing death. Manslaughter times three. And dangerous operation of a vehicle causing death. These charges will have lengthy sentences. The only thing L can muster up at this time is, What will happen to me? Where will I go? The detective replies with a chuckle. The maximum security corrections facility known as Kinke Horde. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I want to make an announcement. The Horde does have merch. If you're interested in copying any, head straight over to streamlabs.com slash K-I-N-K underscore E-H-H slash merch. Love you guys. Peace.